Andy Hudson Knight here. A bizarre thing happened to us the other day with our microwave. My son was trying to cook his breakfast and he went to punch in the numbers for cooking his, his food and the keypad didn't even work. Nothing was working on the keypad even though the clock was working. You would open the door, the light was still on. So I want to go into the story of how I diagnosed what was wrong with the keypad and the bizarre culprit as to what was wrong with, with causing the keypad to not work. You'll never guess what happened. And comment below in situations that you've had with your electronics or appliances that have been weird, because I'm going to get into this story and show you how I went about opening up the microwave, diagnosing the issue, and encouraging you that you can do the same whenever you have things go wrong with your electronics or your appliances. So let's get into it. Here we are with my Oster microwave that was not working. As you can see, I'm pushing the buttons on here and nothing is happening. If this is happening to you, then this video is for you to discover why these buttons don't work, even though you can see the time is displayed. So I'm going to tackle looking into this. And what we need to do is we need to first unplug the microwave it's very dangerous to be working on a microwave with it plugged into power. So with that unplugged, what we need to do is take off the vent hood. And that's very easy to do. You can see a screw there. I'm just using a Phillips screwdriver. And I'll speed this up so that uh, we can get through this quickly. There's one on each side of my microwave. It could be different on yours. So uh, just taking that apart. Now in the back, there are some unique type of uh, fasteners here. Uh, there are four of them as I'm pointing out and this I will link up in the description as far as the size of this. Um, it's it's kind of a hex head and it has a, uh, a hole in the center so that it can fit into uh, these particular fasteners. I'm using my Flexa tool here. Make sure to check out my review on that video. Uh, for this tool. It's one of my favorite tools because it's bendable. Here I'm going to be using my my uh, drill or my impact uh, drill rather um, and I will link all these things up in the description below. So I'll speed this up as I take off these four fasteners on the back of the microwave and with these off now we can easily remove the vent hood. You just need to slide it towards the back once I move the cord out of the way, we'll slide it towards the back and then you, it should just come right off, as you can see. So these are the components that are exposed on the microwave and everything that runs the microwave is right in this area. You want to be careful of this component that is high voltage. Try to avoid it if you can. So here we are. This is the control board for the microwave for the uh, the touchpad, and I find it's a good idea to label uh, some of the wires so that you know where they go back. I'm just going to label this with a U on it, indicating upper because the uh, the two different plugs in this part of the board look very similar. Now the wires are different colors. You can also take a picture of it before and after, but I find that just putting the tape on makes it easy enough to know where they go back. So I put them in correctly. So I'm going to just gently pull these two connectors off. Now there's two more connectors, one up here, and it has a little tab that you need to depress in order to get it off. So you want to be careful not to pull too hard on that, which would break it. The bottom also has a tab that, that uh, moves a little bit so that you can slide it off. Now with all those off, there's one more thing that we need to check and remove. It's this ribbon here. You want to inspect it. Mine actually is in good shape. You want to inspect it to make sure it's not broken. A lot of times these things can slip out. There's a clip there that you just, uh, that you just pull up and it should pull out easily. Now there are four screws in this control board, uh, Phillips screws that you want to take out. Uh, I have two size screwdrivers here. 
to remove it because the back ones are a little bit tricky to get to as you can see I'll get those out especially that lower right one is hard so all you have to do now is slip this board out and it's a good idea to inspect it there are a lot of different components on it that I'm not going to go into into this video but you want to just look for things that don't look right now these are capacitors here if the tops of those capacitors are bulged or black then those are blown those will have to be replaced you can see all the different soldering points back here make sure that none of them are burned or anything which none of mine are and there's the uh, there's the display the LCD display will take off that cushion there and you want to look underneath it and this is where my issue was and this is so odd underneath here and you'll see in the picture there were two slugs one that was actually still alive and one that had been fried by the electronics now I just had to take the slugs out and then clean up really good underneath there and then once I put everything back together it worked perfectly so just a bizarre situation and I'll show you here sped up how everything goes back together make sure to get that ribbon in uh, securely and completely into that slot and then those uh, tabs on either side should push down to secure it get the vent hood back on and secure the screws on the side and the fasteners in the back and you want to make sure that it is flush with the rest of the console so that it goes in correctly so now that we have that put together let's plug it in and test out the keypad I'm just going to set the time as you can see all the buttons are working they are operating perfectly let's just do a little short cooking uh, demonstration and that works so as you can see this works great I would have never guessed that it would be slugs that were causing the problem with my keypad weird situation with them not only getting inside the microwave but somehow finding their way into that panel and getting up underneath that LCD panel getting stuck obviously on the components there and then I had to clean it out it took me a while to clean out all the goop but a simple solution to a bizarre problem and if you've had situations like this please share your story below in the comments I'd love to hear about it be sure to subscribe to my channel like the video so that YouTube will share this out so others can learn how to diagnose what's going on not only with their microwaves but just their appliances in general and I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one